garbage men woman of the world. What's the best worst thing you have found thrown away? A friend of ours found two bullet resistant vests with paramedic written across them. Being thrown out behind a fire station. I guess they expire or something. Kevlar degrades over time. Especially if you get sweat on it. Worked as a garbage man for a very short time last summer. But the best thing I found was an edition of my local newspaper from the day after the Challenger exploded. My dad used to rent out apartments. One tenant had died and left behind some stuff. There was an old newspaper dated the day before Archduke Ferdinand had been assassinated. Elaine Cedar Chest. I was helping my dad clean out this lady's garage and she said as long as we were there, we might as well take that. Too. She said she always hated the smell of cedar but her husband wouldn't let her get rid of it and now that he was dead, she was sending it on its way. The veneer was never in great shape but it still keeps my wool items safe. I've had it for over 30 years now. I have an old dresser that had the veneer get messed up. I just stripped it off and waxed it. The piece looks great and I don't have to look at chipped veneer anymore. In the 80s I picked up a number of Philips Color TVS. I had a few, so fixing them was just a question of swapping parts. I then sold them cheaply or gave them away to fellow students. We gotta move these color TV SSS. I worked as a garbage man in 1972. A small stray cat jumped into the back of the hopper to look for food. I took him home and named him Saigon. This was the best thing. Second best thing someone threw out an old pair of skis. There was snow on the ground and me and the other guy each took a ski and stood on it and held onto the truck. Great fun. Third best we found an entire case of brile cream. Look it up. And me and the other guy had brile cream fights all day. Total mess. I stripped off before going into my house after work. Worst things a garbage can that had live coals in it that started our truck on fire. All the other posts are sharing things of monetary value and here you are with your wholesome good times. My little brother was emptying out a client's basement and everything was going to be thrown away so my brother was told to keep anything he wanted. He saw a nice looking bike and took it. Turns out it was a Dahan Mew page 8 30th anniversary limited edition and in perfect condition. From what I found on it, it goes for over 4k dollars. Can I have it back please I forgot it was valuable. In the early 2000s my best friend's dad was a garage man. I used to hang out at their house a lot and I remember him finding uncut sheets of holographic Dragon Ball Z trading cards in the trash and bringing them back. They were super dope to see. When I was a kid I found a couch. It wasn't very big, but that's why it was so great. 10 year old me was able to carry it all the way home by myself. About a block and a half. This was before kids having cell phones were huge so I didn't call my parents about it first and they were at the store anyways. So I took the couch home and put it in my room. It was pretty dated. Made of some material I've never encountered again so far. But I thought I was the crap. I had a whole couch in my room. How many 10 year olds had couches in their room? Well my parents came home and clearly weren't happy. But given I carried it up to the second story and got it into my room they let me keep it. My downstairs neighbor helped me. I felt like a king. I had a couch. I had a big box TV for my PlayStation. I had it all. Simpler times. I worked in the scrap metal business and have found not one, but two of three exact same bread statue, of two bears screwing each other. Bras statue. My bad. Congrats you made me google bread statue. My dad was a trash man when I was growing up. He would always be bringing cool stuff home to us. He used to always say that the poor neighborhoods had the most trash and they threw away literally everything. The two best ones that I can think of was a brand new BMX bike and like 20 Nintendo 64 games that he found at a video rental store. Also once at the transfer station one of his co-workers found a dummy arm in the big pile of trash. He pulled it and it ended up being a dead guy. The police later determined that it was a homeless person that got picked up and died when the trash truck compacted him. My father was a garbage man who also did cleanouts for homes and businesses, where they'd rip apart the entire building and throw everything out in their dumpsters. He worked on a ton of really massive houses, some worth tens of millions of dollars. One was worth 40 million and wasn't even the permanent residence. Best things I got as a kid, 
a pretty much unused trampoline with a net and everything. A go-kart that my dad's friend was able to fix up and we use all the time. I live on a dead end. And once he cleaned out a deli that was closing down. And we no joke had unlimited snapples and sodas of every flavor for almost a year. I drink the snapples while out on the trampoline. I used the heck out of all three of those things in my childhood. Not a garbage person. But I live in a large apartment complex. I could have furnished multiple apartments with all the stuff that gets thrown out here. And partially furnished mine. But the best thing I've seen in the pile was one of those grandfather clocks you can make from a kit. Still looked very nice. But it needed some fixing to get it to run again. I'm still waiting to find a piano I would like a piano. I'm not a garbage man. But I once scored a whole custom built staircase from a dumpster. It was in perfect condition but apparently built to the wrong spec. It worked great for my barn. Not me but my brother. Someone apparently threw out grandpa's stuff from the attic after he passed away. This was the last scheduled pickup at the house and everything was already moved out. Nobody living there. Driving an automated. Claw to grab and dump. Truck. My brother was irritated there were these two bowling bags he had to get out to throw in the truck. He realized they seemed a bit heavy, so he opened them to see why. Inside there was real silver silverware flatware. He ended up selling it for scrap prices to a jeweler and got $3,000. Raises the question of what it was actually worth. In Philly, the students at Penn, especially rich overseas folks, will often leave crazy expensive clothes, electronics, kitchen items and furniture in the trash when the scholastic year is done. But just toss it out. ETA, about 50 of you from Boston have told me about Alston Christmas. Stop already. Also I know that this happens at lots of colleges. The local college best known for this is Penn. When I was growing up, my neighbor worked at the local council. One night he knocked on the door trying to rehome a couple of kittens that one of the workers had. Apparently, found at the local tip. All I remember was this absolute giant of a man. Normally the most calm and chill person I'd ever met. Absolutely seething with anger while holding a tiny ginger and white kitten in one of his hands. My guess is that someone had dropped off a box with them in hoping it wouldn't be noticed. Which somehow seems like more of a dong move. And more effort. Than just leaving them somewhere public where they might be found by someone. Even if you don't want to take them to a shelter. Anyway. As much as I begged and pleaded I wasn't allowed to keep one because my dad claimed allergies. No trash kitty for me. My uncle was, still is, a garbage man and found a fully boxed Power Rangers Megazord toy. I don't remember which season or what but it had been previously opened and all of the parts and such were still inside. I don't remember if they sold it off or what but it was super cool to see. A part of me feels like maybe a collector tossed their boxes away and mistakenly threw the whole figure with it or some kid's parents ditched it while cleaning up after a birthday or Christmas. I don't know but feels but. Not a garbage man, but have rescued projectors, computers, furniture and even a very expensive Yamaha keyboard. Just needed a new plug, from skips being thrown out, loads of music scores, a dining room table with nothing wrong with it. I may be just about to get a 65 inches touchscreen TV that's no longer touchscreen, too. Depends on what happens to it over the next few days. Large companies throw all sorts away and they're far more focused on I just need to get rid of this than spending the time to find someone to take it. By the same token, I've also been about 20 fully working interactive whiteboards because I couldn't get anyone interested in taking them. P.S. Yes, I sought permission before taking any of the above. If I just took whatever I saw, I'd have even more stuff. Oh man, my time to shine. I've been working at a waste transfer station, garbage dump, for many years, the worst I've seen, just garbage, not counting stuff brought to the hazmat department, a freezer stuffed with a skinned, rotting, headless deer carcass, we nearly called the cops before we realized it wasn't human, used needles, the worst being a tie between porcupine couch and the lady who literally handed me a paper bag full of syringes she found during a park cleanup. A large container of old crystallized picric acid. Bomb squad had to deal with that one. The best. A high-end laptop in perfect condition except for a tiny crack on the LCD panel. Easy DIY repair that took $40 in 5 minutes. 
Thing would have cost 1.5k dollars new. Enough brand new furniture to literally furnish my whole apartment. A high end military grade inflatable boat. Brand new. The weirdest. A first gen blade lit counting machine. Complete with weird tubes of bright green liquid and mercury. When I was prepping it for hazmat disposal I had to call the company that bought the company that made it for some info. They never digitized the records but the oldest repair tech still working was super excited because he remembered servicing them 50 years ago. Coffin. No body, just the coffin. Couldn't see anything wrong with it either. Buckets of testicles. From a ranch that had been sitting out in the summer heat for a week. He smelled so bad my co-worker hurled. That's not the weird part. The weird part is the guys wanted their buckets back. Do you know how bad it has to smell to make a garbage collector puke? And they wanted them back. The $10k duffel bag. Lady came in super upset because earlier she threw out a duffel bag that she didn't know her boyfriend kept cash in. Over $10,000 in cash. We never found the bag. 16 full size barrels of old vegetable grease some guy had saved up in his garage. He was planning to make a biodiesel car or something. Grew up a small town so everyone knew everyone. Our garbage man, Lee, would regularly cull out items for us because he knew my dad would tinker on them. Lee gave me my first bike, which only needed to be painted, and so so many books. He passed a few years ago. When I saw the notice I called up my sister and we had a bit of a nostalgic cry about what a nice man he was to us kids. Finally something I can contribute to. I do trash at apartments. In the year I've worked the job, I've found and kept a couch, minus two desk chairs, a floor lamp, deck furniture, a TV stand, my cat, various decorations I've given to my mom, some things I've sold, a bike, $40. Some outdoor vases, $30, a bed frame, $50, an original Xbox with at least 80 games all in a box, $20, to my friend that collects old video games, but yeah, it's crazy what people throw away. When I was a kid my dad worked for a company that hauled away dumpsters and at one point found an old alto sax complete in the box, ended up playing it for 4 years up until high school when it was stolen. Couldn't play after that since my family couldn't afford a rental let alone pay for a new one. I'm glad you got to play for a few years, but I'm so sorry that it was stolen. Not a garbage specialist, but my buddy ran maintenance at the local landfill, which is located along an extremely busy highway. One of their duties was to clean up the shoulder of the highway a mile in either direction of the main driveway each day. Cash. Money. He would find cash most days on the side of the road. People driving with their windows down and the dollar bills would fly out the window. Sometimes 5 bucks or other times he would pick up as much as 50 to 85 dollars. Although he said it was more lower amounts commonly with the higher dollars being every once in a while. I once got a flat while going through a toll booth. I pulled up on the shoulder about 100 yards away and nothing but cash money blowing around in the grass. My dad used to do the cleaning for a mall and he would bring us some amazing stuff sometimes. I remember he once came back home with a backpack full of miniature toys, like the ones you find in kinda surprise. Another time an entire toy kitchen, and some kids magazines. Lepi tights princesses. I loved it. He also found a lot of stuff for our home but I was a kid so I remember the toys more than anything. I found my wife in a pile of garbage while working on a garbage truck. I was working being trained as a garbage man and one day a woman was throwing out way too much good stuff, boxes of books and I could see she was trying to fill a car and minivan, so I figured she was moving and having to sacrifice good stuff. I talked to her and offered to come back later and help her move so she didn't have to throw away so much stuff, and it ended up being a story that her husband left her for her best friend, and they moved in together. And she couldn't afford the townhouse anymore as she was undergoing cancer treatment. We got married one year later. I like to say I found her in the trash and fixed her up. But the truth is it is opposite. I was the trash she fixed up I. Obligatory not a garbage man but once many years ago I was asked to deliver books left over from a church rummage sale to a minimum security woman's prison. The books almost filled the bed of my pickup. When I got there six inmates were assigned to unload the books. You would have thought all those musty paperbacks were made of gold. The women were delighted and very grateful. 
It's hard to get books in prison. Most won't let people mail books and magazines to inmates. You have to order them on Amazon and have them delivered there. But which, more often than not, people can't afford to do when prison populations are often very poor. My dad worked at a landfill for most of my childhood and my brother and I both got into related companies that directly dealt with landfills for a while. One of the most common things I remember hearing about and seeing all the time were clothing with minor irregularities that had to be thrown away by said clothing company. It was stuff like Roxy, Vans and other stuff you'd see at places like Tilly's or similar clothing store. One of my old co-workers families basically were clothed their whole life from this type of clothing being dumped. The clothing was clean or could be clean to a decent level that the clothing was fine to wear. It was dumb stuff like small rip missing zipper or some other weird thing they couldn't sell it that way. Everyone at the landfill was basically in on the scheme. When the truck with the clothing pulled up to the fee booth, someone would radio people at the dump site and it was like a pack of vultures. Everyone on the site would swarm the truck as soon as everything was dumped out of the truck. I used to remodel Sam's clubs. If a case of juice that meant to be sold is separated, they throw it out. I used to take it to shelters. If I could catch them before it went in the dumpster. Display items, like end tables, patio umbrellas, and in one case, a leather recliner with a small rip in the bottom, are thrown out. Vegetables and fruit are thrown out, took them home for horses, rabbits, and other animals. Once I found a perfectly good stationary bike that my neighbors threw out that I cleaned up then used for years. Can't believe this day comes only 52 times a year. Yep, my neighbors tossed a $1,000 plus rowing machine because the calorie counter stopped working. I worked at a garbage plant building new trash silos and all I got was wheels deace, liptosporosis, from the rat pee on the garbage. I was ill for weeks. Sounds like my friend who helped an elderly relative over the weekend with dismantling a chicken coop and then got histoplasmosis. Had to cut a port into his lung and everything. It jacked him up bad. I found a cardboard cutout from the Mr. and Mrs. Smith movie release when it was in theaters. I put Mr. Smith on one side of the truck and Mrs. Smith on the other side. Got a few fun honks going down the road with a gorgeous Angelina Jolie on the back of a trash truck. I love seeing soft toys title stuck to trucks. Always makes me smile. We have a good friend who garbage picks. He has done so for quite a while now as a hobby. For years he was the ski fairy. We have four kids and they ran through kids skis, boards, poles, boots, masks, like crazy as all the kids do as they grow. He and his wife and son all skied, and he would pick up good stuff when he saw it on his rounds. Every so often we would pull into the drive and leaning against the garage would be skis or boots or other equipment that he thought might work for one or more of the kids. The ski fairy had made a delivery. He has found lots of nice things and more valuable stuff. But still my favorite story is his finding money, change, not like $6 in a drawer or box, buckets of it, $780 or so, not mistakenly thrown out, placed with garbage, and, $780 and change is heavy, no mistake it was being tossed, I guess not worth counting. Used to work with a woman whose husband owned a small apartment building, she had pails in the basement filled with quarters from the laundry machines. Just too much work to roll them. I used to collect the recycling rather than the trash and back then we had to sort it at the truck if the person hadn't separated. One house repeatedly put used condoms in with the plastics. In the end my crewmate knocked and informed the 80 something year old man that they weren't recyclable. Not a garbage man, but my dad used to go dumpster diving. He found a fully functional electric massaging office chair. It was thrown away solely because it had a tiny gash in the leather. He brought it home, sanitized it, and we owned it for many satisfied years. Friend of mine was a teacher in public schools. We live in a university town. He would be off for the summer when the university quarter ended and the students moved out of their apartments. He would dumpster dive and pick up all the small appliances, coffee makers, blenders, sometimes a TV or computer plus lots of silverware plates etc. Basically he picked up all the small things one needs to live in an apartment. He would store all this in his garage and in the fall, he would have a huge garage sale and sell the same stuff back to the incoming students. 
He always made lots of money at this. I'm not a garbage man by trade but more of a hobbyist. Best dumpster dive ever was a Ford dealership that threw out an entire dumpster of new Ford Lincoln Mercury service manuals. They cost hundreds of dollars per set new. It was winter time and Saru cold outside. And it took me 2 hours to empty the dumpster but I got them all. Filled my minivan with no seats in it floor to ceiling. I sold them all on eBay over 18 months or so and made about $10k. I'm not a garbage person, but over 90% of my apartment is thanks to roadside picks. My TV is my best find. The only thing I can find that wrong with it is the top left corner shelling covering has a small piece missing on it. I put some duct tape on it, but it works perfectly and was even tossed out with the remote. You are truly blessed. None of my free TVs have a remote. I have to walk clear across the room sometimes. Over 2 meters. Not a garbage man but was once unloading things at the local dump and some sod threw away a 5 foot long 1.5 inches thick solid copper pole. Heck yeah I snatched that crap. Found your a grounding rod. Not a garbage man, but someone dumped a 6x3 feet patch of drooping agapanthus on the side of the road. Managed to get it into the back of a rhino ATV to get it home. I sawed that monstrosity into like 18 patches. Most lining my yard, and some potted. I was so excited. It really helped get me started into gardening. Now I'm propagating bird of paradise, jade, and some other plants I dk the name of. I also potted two ash tree seedlings for future transplant, but I might try to bonsai one. Not a sanitation worker but my uncle was, and he often brought back some pretty sweet items. We grew up not dirt poor. But definitely paycheck to paycheck and anything that helped us out was a godsend. So when our uncle often got hauls from his work he'd share his spoils with the family and the neighborhood at large. There was one time a whole fleet of Razor scooters had been thrown out by some store due to minor defects with them. The local kid didn't give a dang about a design issue or the sticker was on the wrong way and the like. We all had a ball when we got our new, branded to boot, plaything. Also there was a time an ice creamery had to dispose of a lot of their stock because of exceeding the best before date. Oh man what an epic score that was for the family. We loaded up as much as we could and had a stockpile that lasted us quite a while. Good times. When I was a kid, a frozen food delivery truck broke down on a summer day. The driver walked to nearby houses and told people to come get what they wanted. It was before our garden harvest. So my parents loaded the freezer and drove a car full to other people. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.